Lima, third year. It's, this coach, you know, he's a he's a pro style coach. Um, he plays his team with so much poise. He's rooted, you know, defense, running the ball. He's just a traditional guy. I, I like Brent Belia. In his third year here, he was eight and five last year, five and four in the conference. He's thirteen and twelve overall here, eight and six at home, five and five away. So he's a little risky on the numbers, but in his third year, he's returning six on offense, six on defense. Six transfers sounds like a fair deal to me. What you think, Big Ragu? Yeah, he, he, if you're if you're a gambler, you love this guy because he's like you said, he's eight and five, but some some uh, nuggets lie, lie beneath, beneath those numbers in the conference. He's twelve and six ATS off a straight off loss. He's eight and three ATS, and as an away dog, he's six and two, and it's it had his first winning season last year in eleven years at eight and five. So. I mean, things are looking good for uh, Illinois. You know, they're they're a quality program. You know, it's showing. You know, it's paying dividends for them, and and his coaching style has kind of kind of helped. Um, offensively, you know, he's got Barry Looney Jr. running it. He did lose Tommy DeVito, so now he brings in. He's went out and got a, a, a sophomore transfer quarterback from uh, Ole Miss, Luke Atmeyer. So. Gets three back on the offensive line. He's got to fill the holes at center and uh, left guard. And then he's got uh, offensively, he's got a converted quarterback that's running wide out for him, Isaiah Williams. And I think he keeps the running game intact with, you know, a few underclassmen. I think I think they're right back where they need to be on offense. Yeah, I think that um, – I think he's going to do what he does and, and find ways to win his games. Um, never count this guy out. Definitely take him with the points. Uh, uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I don't think he quite has – he has big 10 sized athletes. He's going to take a couple more years to size up to be able to run with the Ohio States and the Michigans. But he does well right where he's at. I really like uh, this Illinois team this year. On defense, um, He's bringing back another great group right here going into 22, from, from 22 going into 23. He's got a new D.C. over here, Aaron Hendy. You know, only time will tell exactly how they'll hold up, but the way that um, Belima manages the game and believes in his defense and, you know, stuff like that, they'll have a chance. They'll have a yeah. chance because they won't have an irate coach that's that's forcing them to, to perform or do things or whatever. They'll just – be able to be led by their leader, and he'll get them in situations where they can win games. Yeah, he, he's in the perfect conference. You know, he had his stint in Arkansas, and you know he mm-hmm. coached at Wisconsin and went to Arkansas. Now he's back over here in the Big Ten, and you know traditionally I say that's perfect conference for him. But what I don't want to see happen to him is is the game kind of leapfrog him a little bit as far as you know because the game changes. But I think he's kind of made. The adapt, you know, made the adaptations with what he's had for talent and everything. And like you said, he did promote uh, his secondary coach, Aaron Henry, to to um, to defensive coordinator. Who, who by he played for him at Wisconsin when he was coach over there. So that's kind of cool how he's got there. But we'll see. Uh, I want to see how that quarterback uh, role plays out for him. You know, like, like you say, Devito Devito was a good quarterback for him. I think I think he's going to fit yeah, into that same it. role with Altmaier here. Just I don't know how many. I don't know his stats. I didn't pull his stats up, but I, I read some stuff on him. And you know, he's a he's a sophomore, so he'll have a quarterback of the future if he plays into uh, his scheme of things. So in two thousand twenty-two, uh, points per game they were number two against the run. They were number nine, and against the pass they were number eleven. So as long as uh, Aaron Henry's Henry system, if it could elevate them, that'd be great. But if he could just yeah. at least play to how they were. Yeah. That'll be considerable too. Now this Indeed, might be a future. Solid. This might be a future we might want to actually go put in, because they start off with a Toledo team, which they should be. This Kansas team is not going to be the Kansas team we saw earlier last year. That's a possible win. Um, well, not Penn State. Definitely get, got an opportunity to beat FAU, Purdue, 
it depends on how Matt Rule lands. A chance to beat Nebraska, chance yeah. to beat Maryland. Um, depending on how well Fickle works out, if they see Fickle and he's he's stumbling that that far in the season, they might get a win there. Then they got Minnesota, Indiana, two more winnable games. And like I said, the key is going to be beating Iowa. They're going to get this big win November 18th. They're going to beat Iowa at Iowa, and then they're going to uh, take that energy and go past Northwestern. So over six and a half for me for sure. Yeah, I, I don't hate that look at all. I think they get back to eight, eight games again. Yeah, eight, eight I mean, sounds they, just they about a, right. They get a middle bowl game. And they get back to eight games, eight eight wins. If they get nine, then they'll play deeper into the postseason, you know, in a better bowl. But I think they'll get that bowl bowl game, probably match up against an SEC team, possibly. Yeah, th- this is probably one of uh, the best futures I've seen since I've been capping out these teams so far. But we still got more um, conferences and teams to go through, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hold it for I make that a final decision, but. Yeah, I really like that one right there. It's, it's a big possibility. But let's keep the train moving. 